He turned himself in late last night on a warrant by the Orlando Police Department. The charge was aggravated assault with a firearm. It's a third degree felony. We are requesting that the court set bond in the amount of $2,500 with no contact with the alleged victims in the affidavit and no possession of uh, weapons. Cash Wheeler is facing a third degree felony charge stemming from a road rage incident in Florida. As first reported by the Orlando Sentinel, Wheeler has been charged with one count of aggravated assault with a firearm and booked in a circuit court. Wheeler is alleged to have flashed a handgun at another person during a road rage incident on July 27th. A warrant for his arrest was filed the following day. According to county records, he pled not guilty through a lawyer on August 3rd and turned himself in on Friday morning to Orlando police. Wheeler appeared in court for a hearing on Friday afternoon. He was given a $2,500 bond ordered to turn in any weapons he owns and to have no contact with the alleged victim. Hello, Your Honor, Mr. Wheeler appears to have no other criminal history. Um, it does appear to be a road rage type incident. Mm -hmm. He allegedly flashed a handgun at the alleged victim. Um, but given that he has no prior history and does not know the victim, the conditions that defense has laid out, so he has no objection. AEW issued a statement in response to the news saying, AEW has been made aware of the charge and we are closely monitoring the situation. Wheeler is fully cooperating with local authorities. The company stated to the Orlando Sentinel. Wheeler, along with his FTR teammate Dax Harwood, are scheduled to defend the AEW World Tag Team Championships against the Young Bucks at All In later this month. And moving on, our own Dave Meltzer wrote about several news items regarding AEW in the latest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Meltzer is reporting that Brian Danielson versus Kenny Omega was the likely plan for All In had Brian Danielson not broken his arm at Forbidden Door 2. Danielson underwent surgery for the injury last month and is expected to return in October or possibly a week or two earlier. Danielson and Omega went to a 30-minute time limit draw at Grand Slam 2021 in their only AEW singles match thus far. The only other time they wrestled a singles match was at a PWG show in 2009 when Danielson beat Omega in just over 22 minutes. Omega is scheduled the team with Kota Ibushi and Hangman Page at All In against Kanoshki Takeshita, Jay White, and Juice Robinson. Meltzer is also reporting that there have been talks backstage regarding Jade Cargill potentially returning soon. She has been gone since Double or Nothing and dropping the TBS championship to Chris Statlander. Fightful Select recently reported that Cargill was backstage at the August 9th Dynamite in Columbus as well. And Thunder Rosa has mentioned on her vlog recently that she is nearing a return to the ring. It's not clear when Rosa will be cleared, but Meltzer writes that she has planned to challenge for the AEW Women's World Championship once she does. On to the WWE side of things, Dave Meltzer provided a look at where WWE could be going with its Judgment Day storyline. Meltzer wrote that while things could change, the long-term plan is currently for Damian Priest to be out of the Judgment Day. Meltzer added that it's likely JD McDonough will join the group, but that isn't 100% confirmed. There's been growing tension between Priest and Finn Balor in recent months. That tension led to Balor losing his challenges against World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins at both Money in the Bank and SummerSlam. Priest won the men's Money in the Bank ladder match this July and still holds the briefcase. Balor's friendship with McDonough has recently contributed to the tension between Balor and the rest of the Judgment Day. Also, it appears that Becky Lynch and Trish Stratus' steel cage match will be going Going down at WWE Payback. The cage match between Lynch and Stratus was announced on Raw earlier this week, but WWE didn't reveal when it would be taking place. An announcement on this week's episode of Main Event then stated that the match will be happening at Payback. Payback is being held in Pittsburgh on Saturday, September 2nd. This is the first match that's set for the pay-per-view. The steel cage stipulation for Lynch versus Stratus is a way to stop Zoe Stark from getting involved. She's repeatedly held helped Stratus during this feud with Becky Lynch. Starks aligned with Trish Stratus when she helped Trish defeat Becky at Night of Champions this May. It looked like a rematch between Lynch and Stratus was being planned for SummerSlam, but that didn't end up happening. They had a brief match on
from the July 31st episode of Raw that saw Stark immediately interfere and attack Becky. Becky and Trish then had a match on Raw this Monday that ended in a double countout. And then they both brawled in the concourse. Again, Zoe Stark got involved and helped Trish lay out Becky Lynch. Adam Pearce yelled at Trish Stratus and Zoe Stark after the brawl and informed them that their match would be taking place inside a steel cage. Edge's match on SmackDown tonight could be the last of his career. He spoke with ET Canada ahead of Friday's show in his hometown of Toronto and revealed that his contract expires after he wrestles Sheamus. The 49-year-old also said he isn't sure if his wrestling career will continue afterwards. When asked if Friday would be his final match, he said that he truly did not know. He also went on to say that this was the last match on his current contract, so he doesn't know and probably won't know until he gets to the locker room and figures things out. Also saying, I'm going to be 50 in October. It's not easy anymore. Before, what I used to just take for granted to be able to do, now there's a process and there's a fallout and there's a lot. It's the dream gig, but it's getting real really hard. Last year on August 22nd, 2022, Edge did cut an off-air promo in Toronto and teased possibly retiring in a year's time. Now is the year's time. Two years ago, Park, July 1st, 1992, I had my first wrestling match as Adam Copeland. Sexton Hardcastle was later. And I knew, I knew one day I'd be standing right here for all of you. I just knew it. What I didn't dream of is that I would have to retire for nine years and fight, fight with every fiber of my being to get this back. And all of you are the reason for that. This is a reciprocal relationship. Man, I just stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with one of the best talents and the future of this industry in Damien Bruce. And I can't wait to do it some more. And I can't wait to hopefully come back one last time. One last time here in Toronto. I'm looking at the calendar. We usually come here in August. So next August, I plan on seeing each and every one of you. And in a perfect world, we all say goodbye to each other that night. Hey, but that's okay, man. This is the place for me to do it, okay? I mean this when I say it. I love all of you. Thank you to everybody who tuned in to this episode of The Latest. As always, do not forget to check out our previous episodes, and I'll catch you on the next one.